Yeah. Um, man, couldn't be more proud of these guys uh, sitting up here and the rest of our team. I um, mean, what a hell of a football game. Um, you know, it was a hard-fought game. I thought both teams really played hard. Really proud of these guys. We talked about it all week leading up to the game, how important it was going to be to play physical. And I thought we were definitely the most physical team on the field tonight. Um, you know, our ability to run the ball, we almost outrushed Michigan for 100 yards. Our ability to stop the run, I think, was the difference in the ball game. Uh, obviously made some big plays defensively, scored two touchdowns. That was critical. I uh, held them out a couple of times again inside the five yard line a couple of times early and came away with no points. And you know, what, what this group did tonight was what they've done all year. They just played really tough football, hard nosed football, believed in each other, uh, believed in their teammates, and, uh, and just found a way to overcome and persevere. So it's kind of what we've done all year. We did it tonight. That's who we are. That's our football team. And we look forward to you know, teeing it up again in 10 days and having a chance to win a national championship. We'll start here on the uh, left on the aisle. Get a mic. Max, Derek Leto, KillerFrogs.com. Uh, can you describe the emotions right now compared to after the Big 12 title game? Yeah, this one's a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> feel a little bit better after this one. Um, no, it, I think, yeah, after that Big 12 championship game, I think that stung, you know, for, for everybody. I think a lot of people were emotional because you get so close to a, to a league championship and then for us to, to battle back and, and kind of, you know, avenge that loss and, and be able to win this one tonight against a great opponent and, you know, have the opportunity to go play, play for a national championship, I think just means so much to, you know, the guys up here, guys in the locker room, our coaching staff, our fans, our university. So I think that's kind of the, you know, the biggest thing. We'll go to the right, in the front row. Sonny Stephen Johnson, Fort Worth Star Telegram. You spent a lot of this week talking about the conferences, now you guys matched up. This one, did this one kind of feel like an old school Big 12 game? Yeah, yeah, in some ways it does. Um, you know, it's funny, we talked to the team just kind of uh, in pregame about, about the importance of confidence and where confidence comes from. And, and these guys have epitomized that all year. And, you know, there, if you look at this game, there were so many momentum swings. You know, it seemed like two or three different times Michigan had all the momentum and then somebody made a play. You know, we, Quentin made that big touchdown uh, play and actually made a hell of a throw. And then, you know, we had uh, defensive stops when we needed. And it was, it was one of those things where, you know, every time we started to, to get on our heels a little bit defensively, you know, all of a sudden there'd be three and out. We'd, we'd, we'd stop them three and out and get the ball back and the offense would score and put a little distance between us and, and Michigan. So it was, it was a kind of an old fashioned Big 12 shootout in some ways. Um, but like I said, I mean, we came out with a, with a very physical mindset. It was a, a physical football game. And as I said earlier, you know, we were the most physical team on the field tonight. And I think that was easy to see. And D, just a quick follow up. You had a tremendous game uh, tonight. Was it kind of tires, tiresome for you guys during the week? Just hearing so much about the questions about whether or not you guys could match up for Michigan's physicality? Yeah, uh, I definitely would say, uh, you know, we kind of just used it as a little bit of uh, motivation. Um, you know, we feel like the Big 12 uh, is, very, is a very physical conference, and we just wanted to come out and showcase what the Big 12 is all about. We'll stay here in the front row. Coach, you lost Kendra Miller early in the third quarter to an injury, and then Amari Mercado stepped in and had a really big game. Talk about his performance tonight and, and what that meant to, to you guys getting the victory. Yeah, that's been, that's been what we've done all year. You know, somebody goes down, somebody else steps in and picks it up, and Amari's just uh, that kind of player. You know, he's one of those guys that's been here a long time. He's been through a lot. Um, you know, it's a lot of highs, a lot of lows. And he's one of those guys, he's ready every week. And when he gets his opportunity, he always makes the most of it. I'm not surprised that he did what he did tonight because that's what he's really done every, all year when he gets an opportunity. I hate to see Kendra get out with an injury. We'll obviously assess that and, and hopefully he'll be ready to play uh, a week from Monday. But uh, we couldn't be more proud of, of Amari and what he did and what he's done all year. We'll stay center, set, uh, first row there, second seat. Hey, Quinn, uh, Colin Post, Horn Frog Blitz. After the Big 12 title game, you kind of talked about after the fumble, you kind of needed to set up um, going forward for the Frogs. Talk about your performance today, and just did you feel like it kind of needed to be your moment to help your team get the win today? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, just kind of bouncing back off the, off the Big 12 game. Uh, like Max said, obviously that's fun, and um, I feel like I could have, um, you know, like, let's get some more, some more bigger plays that you 
know, possibly could have helped us win that game. Like you said, the fumble, um, you know, obviously wasn't my wasn't my best highlight. Um, you know, you know, I kind of dwelled on the fourth minute, um, but but as soon as I heard our name called for, um, for you know, the college football player, I was um, I kind of uh, kind of turned that loss into a lesson, um, as well as my teammates. Um, you, know, kind of, you know, just kind of uh, shook that game off, shook the fumble off, and you know, anything else, um, you know, I may have you know done bad and kind of just um, you know look uh, look forward to the next game. I want to add something to that. So, you know, our, our, our players and coaches, I think we did a really good job coming off of the Kansas State loss of, of looking in the mirror and saying, hey, look, what can we do better? You know, and, and that's what I love about this group. No one ever blames anybody else. There's no, you know, no one points fingers. There's not, no one tries to, the offense doesn't blame the defense or the defense doesn't blame the offense or there's none of that on this football team. Uh, we're, we're all in this thing together. Um, you know, the great thing about it is when somebody makes a mistake, which they're going to inevitably make during a football game. Everybody on the sideline is, is um, you know, telling them to, to move on, put it behind them, and that's that's what makes this group so special. Um, you know, I thought our coaching staff did a great job. There were some issues, uh, you know, in the red zone, uh, both defensively and offensively against Kansas State. Felt like we addressed those, um, and you know, made some corrections, and I think it showed up today. Uh, so again, all those things when you play a team like Michigan and a team which is evenly matched uh, as these two teams were, you know, you've got to do a great job in, in, in the red zone, and, uh, both offensively and defensively. We did that today. So stay in the center in the fourth row here. <laughs> Nicholas Odell, Arizona PBS Cronkite News. Um, really for you, Coach Dykes, and for you, uh, Max Doug, we saw a lot of these crazy three, four play swings that it was just really just crazy to, to watch. Um, what do you think it's, it says about the poise of your guys' team to be able to withstand some of those major three, four play swings, particularly late in that third quarter, and to be able to come and still maintain a leading position throughout? Yeah, I think, you know, momentum is, is so big in college football. You know, whoever has it, you know, it's, it's such a big advantage. But I, I think what Coach Dykes and, and what our strength coach, Coach Cos, does, you know, so well. Of, you know, preaching next play. If you walked up and down our sideline, you're gonna hear everybody on sideline saying next play. Um, continuing to fight, continue to believe, not worrying about what that last play just, you know, was, whether it was a successful play or whether it was a bad play, um, just playing that next play. I think that's kind of our mindset, which helped us kind of fight through some of the momentum swings. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that. I mean, I think it was, it was crazy. I mean, it really was. Um, you know, it felt like there were about two series here. We got on our heels a little bit defensively. Um, and you got to give our players a ton of credit. And they got on the sideline, they got settled down. Um, our coaching staff, I thought, made some adjustments. And, you know, the guys just said, you got refocused and, you know, took the field with the right mentality and went out and started making plays again. And so, you know, it was, it was a very, you know, unusual game. I mean, the, the last couple of minutes of the third quarter seemed like it lasted about an hour. Uh, it was wild. You know, it was just big play after big play after big play, momentum swing. But the thing that we did over and over and over again was answer. You know, when we had to, we, we put distance between us and them uh, repeatedly, and you know that that was the key to the ball game. So the center, second row, Tori Crouch, PillarFrogs.com. Max, this is a lot of first for for this team. First time college ball playoff, first team from Texas, first time teams to play for national title, and you know, since the 1930s. When you hear all those things, it's just kind of what goes through your mind, especially kind of as a leader of this team, when all those things kind of put in front of you. Yeah, it means a lot. And I think, you know, there, there's been so many great teams that have come through and built this program up. You know, there, there's probably too many to, to name that um, they did a lot to get this program to, to where we're at. And, you know, this means a lot to, to those guys, to our university, our fans that have continued to support us, have continued to have our backs. But it just happens for the guys in this locker room. You know, a lot of guys have been through a lot of stuff. Um, you know, some lows, some failures, things that's where we guys keep fighting. Happy for this coaching staff you know, that came in and, and believed in us and put us in spots to be successful. So just there, there's a lot of pride, you know, amongst TCU and this university. Another question here in the back, Seth. Hey, Sonny, you said before the game that you are going to think about Coach Leach before this was kicked off. With the way that game played out, with all those yeah. points being scored like that, what do you think Coach Leach would yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, he probably game? got a kick out of it, yeah. You know, it's, it's funny, you get into a, a game like this, I mean, look, this is this is all of our lives. You know, it's these football players' lives, it's coaching staff's lives. I mean, it's just, it's what we do. We pour our heart and soul into this, and 
everybody up here makes a ton of sacrifices and you know so you put so much in it's, you get a little emotional sometimes and uh, there was a time there you know where I took a knee where you know I thought about my dad thought about coach Leach um, you know it's uh, pretty special when you can win one of these games and you certainly wish you could share it with them but you know you feel the presence you really do and um, it was uh, you know it was like you said man it was an old-fashioned shootout and something he would have uh, got a kick out of for sure. All right, we're going to stay here in the, on the right, in the back. <coughs> Quentin, Derek, Derek Collins, Bill Collins, Clark Collins. Can you talk about the Michigan kind of debris that that 37 deep catch? Can you talk about what was running through your mind? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, I think Max kind of, you know, you know, summed it up uh, with, with Coach Kyle and my whole, you know, strength and conditioning core just up and down the sideline you know, every five seconds, talking about next play, next play, next play. So, um, you know, like once you hear that after, after a while, it's like, all right, like next play, like the play that just happened, like even if it was, like he said, uh, a real bad play, you just kind of, you know, get a tendency just to shake it off right then and there. Um, you know, obviously we'll come revisit it and stuff uh, after the game, you know, on film. Um, but, but, but in that moment in time, especially with a close game like that, you, you really have no time to just dwell on what happened because, um, you know, if you, you know, stay, stay in the shadow of that last play, it kind of affect the plays uh, following that. So, um, you know, kind of just, kind of just staying low with that through the, uh, through the course of the game. We'll stay here in the center in the back. Just by the front tape news, Max. Um, given how crazy this game was, and now you've got to go play the biggest game in your career next week, how long do you kind of give yourself to enjoy this game, and how soon do you plan on kind of getting on to that one? No, yeah, this, is, this is a big win. We're going to celebrate it tonight um, as a team and, and as a fan base, but we know that we, we got a bigger one coming up, and that's the one that we really want. And, you know, right when we get on the flight back to Fort Worth is when our, our start, or, or, you know, where our, when our preparation starts. And I think, you know, that's where kind of our minds are at. You know, we're going to celebrate it. You know, you know, obviously we're excited, but you know, we, we know we got a big one coming up. Here in the very back, far left. Uh, Sonny, Paul Marvin with USA Today. Michigan seemed very confident coming into this game tonight. I'm curious as a team or as a staff, if you noticed it, is that something you spoke about as a group? If you needed that as motivation? Say the first part again, I'm sorry. Michigan seemed very confident yeah, coming yeah. into this game. Did you use it as a team or did you even notice it? Um, you, know, you know what's funny is, That kind of stuff hasn't really bothered us. You know, like we said it a million times, but you know, look, we were picked seventh in the preseason poll uh, in, in the Big 12. Um, you know, so it's at some point you just kind of quit listening to what everybody says, um, and it doesn't really affect you. And I think that's what's been so great about these guys is is that they've kept a real steady mindset from the very beginning. Um, you know, early on we were told how bad we were. As we got a little better, we were told we could be pretty good, and then all of a sudden, how great we were, and and all that stuff. And our guys never change. You know what I mean? I mean, we never. They didn't change personally. Nobody. Um, nobody all of a sudden, uh, you know, became a, a tough person to deal with. I mean, everybody's just kept a great mindset. And look, I mean, I was, I heard it. It frustrated me. You know, again, I believe in our players. Like, I think we're we're a physical, tough-minded football team, and it bothered me that you know we heard all week about how we were going to get lined up and run through and, and all that stuff. And I'm sure these guys were extra motivated, um, but at the same time, I mean, look, they do their jobs. They uh, you know do it with great pride. Um, they prepared incredibly well. You know, we had three weeks of outstanding practices. I thought we had a really good plan coming to the bowl site and doing handling it the way we handled it. And these guys were the biggest part of that. You know, to have a player miss curfew, you wouldn't have anybody late to anything. You know, they had a, a business mentality uh, when we got here to Phoenix and, um, you know, carried over to the game. So on the far right, front row. Coach, I know everything is cal <laughs> calculated. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and, and analytics pour, pour over and all that. On that third and seven, the, on, um, in the fourth quarter, you guys didn't take a shot in the end zone. Kind of looked like you guys were able to kick the field goal. What was the thought behind yeah. that at that point? Well, so the thought was, you know, we were hoping to, to get it down to like fourth and two or three to go for it. That was the idea was, you know, on second thought, having, having done that probably wouldn't, didn't turn out great. We'd do it differently if we had a chance to do it over again. But, but that was the mentality. It was okay. Look, let's 
let's cut it down to fourth and three or fourth and four. And then we felt like we had a better shot at going for it. And, you know, we lost the yard, and so all of a sudden it turned into a field goal deal. And, you know, the field goal was big because, you know, instead of being up three, we were up six. And that changed Michigan's mentality completely when they got the ball back at the end of the game. So different, it's such a different approach when you have to score a touchdown than if you have to kick a field goal. So we felt like every point mattered in this game, and it turned out it did. And, um, you know, uh, wasn't an ideal exchange the way it went down, but again, I think it, it turned out the way it needed to. Third row on the left. Hey, uh, Ian Quentin and Jeff Wilson from Fox today, and Max too. Right? The same question that guy just asked about the, the did you guys feel disrespected? Because some of the guys in the auxiliary room, like Johnny and Amari, talked about how you'd heard that Michigan players said, Are they in the Big 12? You know, stuff like that. But that did, did that motivate you? Uh, yeah, I definitely think that it motivated us, you know. Um, we heard all week uh, that they were going to help physical us, and I think, like you said, it just gave us a little bit of motivation. So um, I think the guys, you know, handled it well uh, during practice and were very physical in the showcase tonight. Uh, me, I, was, I mean, I've been, I've been hearing stuff like that since, you know, uh, as long as I can remember. But uh, at the end of the day, that's, that, that's a part of it. That's a part of, you know, uh, you know good, good competition. That's what, uh, you know, makes it a feel. Um, but but me personally, um, I don't I don't really like to get caught up in the social media uh, he says she says stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, we got the job to do, and, and, and that's playing football. So uh, you know, when you know big games like this, I, I tend to stay off of uh, you know social media, just going on people's pages, looking about what they're talking about. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter um, if they can't perform on uh, you know on the field. And, and let me just say this: I mean, we know we're going to hear it again, and it's not going to stop now. You know what I'm saying? We're going to play again in ten days, and we're going to hear the same crap. For 10 days that we heard leading up to this ball game. And, you know, we got to do what we did this game. We got to answer that criticism and show up and, and uh, you know, do what we're supposed to do. But if we think that's going away, I think you guys all know that's not. That's just the way, that's the way it is. Stay here on the left in front row. Coach, you're a guy that has an appreciation for history, uh, TCU being sort of left out of the conference and having to find its way back and then getting here and being left out in 2014. You get in and you win. Sort of what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Yeah, I mean, I think it validates, it validates the committee. You know, it validates the, you know, what's great about college football is every single game matters. You know what I mean? And there's no other sport that's like it. And that's why people, pour so much into to games in September and so much into games in October and so much into games in November is because they all mean something. You know, they're all really, really important and that's what makes the great the, the sport great. And in order to run through and win 13 games like this team has done, I mean, it takes an incredible amount of maturity and focus. You can't slip up. You've got to, you've got to prepare every week and you've got to, to uh, you know, give your best every single time you take the field because if you don't, you're going to get beat. And that's what this group figured out all year is, is how to do that, how to do it for, for 14 weeks, uh, going into now 15 weeks. And, uh, you know, just showing up, working hard, preparing. But, you know, as far as history goes, I mean, look, it's, you know, I mean, this is, this is a special team. I don't know that, you know, you go back and you look at uh, teams that have played for national championships, typically they're not picked up in the conference. Um, and, you know, that's, Again, that's a credit to these guys. Uh, they never listened. They always believed. They rolled their sleeves up. They went to work every day. They care about each other. And they do. If they did things the right way, something good would happen. And it has. We have time for one more question. We're going to stay here on the left front row. Coach, uh, Jeremy Clark, 24 7 Sports, Clint Front Blitz. You talked about the end of the third quarter. Those final few minutes seemed like an hour. How long did that last play when y'all stopped them on fourth down and they were reviewing the help? What was that feeling like and when did you kind of allow yourself to start celebrating? You know, I probably celebrated a little too soon, honestly. Uh, you know, I didn't see the flag come in or I didn't certainly didn't anticipate that that was going to get reviewed for targeting. And that sequence of events, it was weird because, you know, they snapped the ball, the quarterback wasn't ready. I wasn't sure if his knee was down before the forward pass took place. I mean, there was just a lot of stuff that, that they had to sort through. You know, at the end of the day, you got to give the officials credit. They got it right. They got the call right. And uh, it was a hell of a way to end a ball game. I know that. There was a lot of, a lot of uh, uncertainty about, you know, what happened. And, and, but, you know, it, it did seem like a while. I don't know how long it took, but it certainly seemed like it took about an hour to me.
Okay, we'll do one final question here in the front row left. So, uh, Mackie, before we start talking, I'm here texting. You remember what TC was like 20, 25 years ago. There's a handful of us in this room I remember it too. Can you speak to what a win like this means to TC? Yeah, you always say it all the time. I mean, it's credibility. You know what I mean? You got to, when you're a small private school, you got to fight for it. I mean, it's just the way it is. I mean, you know, there's, Michigan's got 750,000 alumni. We got, 50, you know, 75,000, whatever it is. And, you know, that's just the way it is. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you always have to fight for credibility. It's, it's part of the part of the deal. It's part of what makes TCU great, though, is that they roll their sleeves up, they go to work, they figure out a way to do it. it it's not only the football team, it's it's the entire university, it's every athletic program at the university, and that's why there's so much excellence at the place. When you look around at the other teams, um, the other you know, other sports and, and the other teams that, that represent TCU and what they do and how they compete. And I think we all have a chip on our shoulder. It's the part of part of the Horn Frog way. Uh, it's just the way it is, and, and uh, you know, again, that's what makes the place special. That's what makes these guys special is you know, they just they show up, they go to work, they keep grinding, and nothing ever bothers them. And they do. They carry a chip on their shoulder every day, and it motivates all of us. But uh, yeah, I see it as positive. All right, that will conclude our press conference.